So, we arrived in Spain with Harriet. This is Harriet, by the way. Um, and this is her van she bought the other day. And all we have to do is convert it. And the aim is to convert it in one week. And she bought loads of stuff. She thinks... Hopefully. She thinks this is enough no, no, wood. there's more under there. You haven't seen it yet. There is more. There is more. The fact that the van is mostly full of wood means there's not enough wood. Guarantee it. <laughs> We're gonna have a bet. I've done my measurements. We're gonna have I a bet. Hope does we've got everything we need. Does Harriet have enough wood? <laughs> Comment in the below and find <laughs> out later. That is not enough wood. You have no idea how much that van's gonna eat. Okay, we'll um, see. So let's have a look at your thoughts for design. Um, cool. What's the general structure you're thinking of? So a fixed bed, basically. Mm. That is like the first thing. Um, and then storage underneath. And then because it's so small, like closed storage ideally to the side of the van and then at the back that will be the kitchen and then the, the bathroom. So the, the kitchen will come out the back of the van? Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. So like from underneath the bed frame so the cooker can go on one side um, and then on the other side that can be the surface for a chopping area. And then cool. just storage boxes underneath. Nice Sounds and good. Simple. Um, so we're going to take out the floor and then we start insulating the sides. There's these old screws which are knackered so we're just going to rip them out. Um, but it leaves a lot of holes in the bottom of the van so before we put the insulation in we're going to have to try and seal them up or do something with them because we just don't want to have any rust points under the van if we can help it. But the great thing is this van's not very rusty. Um, often you'll find the base of the van will be quite rusty from what it's been used for if it's a very old van. This van's in very good condition, so we don't really have to do any rust work. We don't have to strip it back and file it down and rust proof it. This is Tech Sound Van Flooring from sounddeadening.co.uk. They're a great little retailer which um, basically does lots of van base insulation. We got the, the walls and the ceiling stuff as well from them. It's got an adhesive back, so you can just put it down and then mold it around all the shapes of the van and take away all the air gaps. It's just really easy. Uh, because of the height of this van, we don't really want to take a lot of height away from the flooring, so this is perfect for that. So we're basically making the floor now. Um, we use the old floor, which we cut, took out here to, to mark it out. And uh, just using a bit of a sturdier wood because the old floor was a little bit rotten. This will basically give us a good base to screw into and build the van out of. So it's kind of important that it's good. We're just going to screw this in, just go straight into the metalwork of the van. Um, and then basically the floor will be done. Uh, we just be able to start building on it then, which would be really cool. So we're screwing this directly into the ridges. There's a ridge there. So I can just... We're just doing the, putting the cable in it. So we're not using conduit for this fan because um, it's a bit more simple from electronics from the van I did myself. We're just labeling the end of the cable so we know exactly which cable goes to where. And we're gonna have two lights here. So I put just a bit of loop here just so we've got enough to kind of wire it in. There's gonna be there's gonna be a light at the back as well. So it should be quite easy. For the insulation for this van, we have this stuff called Dodo Mat. It's really awesome because it's um, insulative. We can just stuff it in and tape it and spray it and glue it to places. But at the same time, it's made from recycled bottles, um, you know, like uh, Coke bottles and stuff like that. So it's super enviro, which is really good. Uh, and we're just gonna get this in all the crevices, stuff it in. We're gonna put it into the panels. We're gonna spray glue it on. And then we're gonna add a foil layer, which will kind of give like a, a, a moisture barrier. And then after that, then we can start building. So you can just rip this stuff to take it off. Um, and then just pack it in. It actually works really well, super easy. Um, then we can stuff it in these holes. So we can cut a bit about the, the right size, spray a little glue in, probably don't even need to do that. And just shove it in, make it filled out. So this bit will kind of fit in here. 
All we'll do is take a roll of it. Just shove it in, get it really far down. Probably stuff some more in there as well. Um, but we'll make sure we do the other stuff first and then we'll come back and fill as much as we can in every other place. As you can see, we've let the light cables peek through so we can obviously get them again. Now we're gonna put on this um, Dodo mat. Um, it's by the same company. Uh, it's adhesive on the back so we can just line the entire van and this will serve not only as a moisture barrier, but it adds another whole layer of insulation and sound deadening. So it'll make a nice, quiet, cool place in the van. Hello, my old friend. So any place we can't get with the insulating foam, Horrible stuff, really, but I love it. Uh, Harriet only bought one. So, just putting this donate stuff on, um, it's amazing. Like, we just did this in like two seconds, <laughs> straight over. And we just do the same on this side, we can mold it around a little bit. Just put a few cuts in to find our wires and then we're going to be all good. Um, probably just two wraps around with this and we're basically done. Just so fast. Really, really cool. I have to say I love this Dodo um, insulation foam which is stuck on. It not only provides like a really, really good um, moisture barrier, but it's so fast to put on. It's really, really easy, way easier than stuff I did before. Um, there are gonna be links in the description beneath it. Um, yeah, it's fantastic, this stuff. Uh, and at the moment, Harriet's just padding out the wheel arches and you just stick it on. It's so easy, brilliant. So, at the moment, we're um, just putting on this cladding. It's gonna be a layer of cladding um, down the sides. And then we'll have another clad layer which overlaps it, but like kind of going the other way and this will be painted, should look really cool with some side lighting with the LED strips. Um, yeah, so not too bad progress for day one. Where we can see the screws, we're using these um, cups, screw cups, and it just makes a nicer effect um, when we screw them in. And it protects the wood as well, so it looks quite nice. Just at Aki, it's a Spanish like building shop. Hope we can find what we need. It's quite hard to build stuff in a foreign country because you don't know where to get stuff. What have we come here to get, Harriet? More wood. Ah, no way. <laughs> Funny that. Day two. <laughs> so this morning, um, putting out some of the bed frame, um, getting that blocked in. It kind of doesn't quite work out that straight, so I've sort of built it up a little bit to kind of make it more parallel. Um, I'm going to start building in like a little cupboard here um, and laying out the floor where we're going to have um, the heater and the gas and things like that. Meanwhile, Harriet is painting um, some of the wooden slats over there behind the other van. Should be good for the ceiling soon. So we're going to build out half bulkhead in the back here um, and detach these pieces um, to the wall. Having to do some sculpture work with the uh, um, jigsaw, but you know, it's time to get good at this. I'm just gonna paint the top section of this with a white sort of chalk paint and then fade it down uh, into this blue dye uh, and then sand it back. So it kind of gives, it's gonna be like an ombre. Whatever an ombre is. It's a water-based bait called chalk paint, so you can water it down uh, so you can apply a thin layer or a thick layer, you put it on, wait for it to dry and then you can sand it back. Um, I do like two or three layers to like paint and sand, paint and sand so you can build it up and see what you're doing. So we're just putting this roof in now, it's so fast for two people. Um, and Harriet's getting her fishing ge efficiency game on. Um, and we've just been putting these in with these uh, little screw cups, they look really nice, tidy, um, and cutting it to fit this form. I'm just measuring it out each time, it looks really nice. Uh, now we're going to try and do the same with these corners to probably get another piece in. It's always tight to get them in the corner, but you can usually do more when you think. 
So what we're trying to do now is build out where the bed frame is. Now this is going to be one basically big bed and we're going to have a lean-to storage cupboard here. Um, and just trying to make sure that it's super tight, super square um, and then build everything out of that. I always start with the bed as the reference point because if that's completely square then everything you build out of it is basically going to fill in the rest. Um, but you've got to start with something, right? Uh, we've got this um, LED lights, we're in Spain, so we just kind of got what we could get on Amazon Prime. Um, they're in a waterproof housing, which makes them pretty robust actually. Um, and But the fixings are kind of quite quite wide and they're not really good. So what I'm doing is I'm just panel pinning underneath it. Just these little panel pins, hold them in. Looks looks tidy and it's going to be covered anyway, but it's a really good way to do it. Um, and as you can see right now, I'm just going to start connecting this up. I've split this and I'll be able to put each side into a, into a chocolate box. Um, and also on the other side, just connected it up over here. It's gonna be on, it's gonna be on one lighting ring. Um, and that's just gonna allow us to have one switch to turn on both of these side lights. They're gonna be so good. I'm really excited about them. The, the, the light is perfectly warm. It's gonna reflect, oh, it's gonna be great. So we have lighting lift off. This is gonna look so good. And the same on this side. Um, and basically I've just wired them in parallel. These chocolate boxes will be hidden behind. Now we're doing um, some of the internals. Uh, as you can see, we are building out this drawer. Um, this will have the cooker inside it, so we can pull that out and in. Um, and we're gonna have a chopping board which comes out here, which is really sturdy now. You can hardly, hardly budge it, which is really cool. Harry is now putting in some panels. Um, these panels are basically uh, just gonna divide up the drawers at least a use for some of the, the tons of this really thin ply she bought. Uh, we're not going to be short of thin ply for boxing out the van. I'll be cutting out some area now for the control panel. It's going to come in here. Um, as you can see with this sort of stuff is you end up like sculpting and shaping it just to fit all the curved areas in the van um, of which there are many. Uh, and we're going to have like a little control panel and it'll have the uh, little two switches uh, and also our, our heater control that's right this tiny van is gonna have a heater so the heater we're putting in is a heat source 2000 um, I put this in my van as well um, I think it's great because you have this really cool controller um, and basically you just go like it's freezing freaking cold and click click and like in you know probably about five minutes your van is pumping um, really warm uh, the other funny thing is this place is so small so this is like ridiculously overpowered um, it will heat this place up insanely fast but it won't use much gas then so it doesn't really matter uh, the cool thing about it is it just uses the same um, LPG so you can kind of or like uh, butane or propane or whatever so you can just fill it up um, either from like a normal bottle you exchange or you can fill it up at gas stations all over Europe um, so they're really cool um, I like them. Uh, so we're going to install this. Uh, you have to have the holes in the floor. You've just got to really kind of know a bit what you're doing about gas. You know, don't um, don't kill yourself if you're going to do this. So don't do this at home. But you know, obviously you're going to. Um, these are the pipes. So the cool thing about this heater and the reason I like these heaters um, is that the inlet comes in and this is the exhaust fumes out. So it burns it, throws the exhaust out outside the van. Um, so you haven't got any build up of fumes inside and it just makes it a lot safer and all that comes in is cool air and hot air pumps out the other end so it's kind of just you know to be safe um, and not have like a small gas heater which you fall asleep and it gasses you or something um, I think it's much better. And the other alternatives of course you could have like a little wood burner stove but there's no not not space for that in this van and, and reality is um, you know the effort this is not effort so yeah we got this heat source pump from leisure shop direct they're great you should check out their website um totally worth a visit they've got pretty much everything you need for van conversion so really worth a go Coming to the end of day three, um, it's only a half day because we had crazy storm this morning. Just didn't want to be working outside, um, but we're, we're 
like smashing it. Um, we just, all we need to do now is um, the electronics, some stuff needs to arrive, which is a bit annoying. Um, and then, yeah, we just gotta put this kind of cupboard in. This is like the last major job. The electronics are easy. I can do that really fast, but making this kind of cupboard. And I think maybe later this evening, we'll just put these sides up here. Um, they, they're gonna be a bit of a faff to make them right because everything's curving and it's a really visual part of the van. Um, you're always gonna see this, so we wanna make it look really good and just make it tight. So that's kind of, do that this evening and be really happy. We're just trying to cut the sides to cover over the lights. It's really difficult with the clan come around the corners and make it look good. Um, but this uh, table saw makes quite a big difference actually. Um, I mean, I didn't have this, I had to use just a jigsaw for everything in when I did my van, but having it around, super useful. So this is gonna fit up here. It's gonna overlap the lights to give a little bit of a side lighting. And we're gonna end up with this thin slice in here, the dreaded thin slice, which we just have to kind of make perfect. Oh, mission touches. Uh, do you wanna show us your favorite part of the van? Oh. Oh, oh. Oh no. <laughs> just gonna... Why, why did you do that? <laughs> um, I'm gonna make it better. I'll do it again. What are you here for? More wood. <laughs> so we're just plumbing in the heater, the gas heater, um, with the gas pipe. So we're gonna have this. This will go to a T joint, and then it'll go to the reg, and then from the other t part of the T joint, we'll go out to our cooker, um, which will slide out on the rollers. Um, just put a little bit of um, PTFE tape, um, gas PTFE tape, fly, um, gas PTFE tape, just to help it seal, and then screw it on to it's nice and tight. Um, it's really worth making sure you do gas properly. If you are not sure what you're doing, get an expert to check it out and make sure that you're not gonna kill yourself. Um, serious stuff. Now I'm just gonna make the drawer which will contain the cooker. Um, so you have the table saw, it's super easy. Cut the sides out. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two cuts along the entire length. Um, and that would just be a little bit closer together and we'll be able to, when we put the board together, I'll have an inside piece and that will slot in and it will give it a lot of stability. A super easy way to make, a, to make some drawers. Nice. We're gonna have a chopping board. Um, we bought this block board, it's weird, it's just blocks glued together. Um, and cut it down to size. And we're gonna glue it and then just bang a load of screws in to keep it still um, while it dries. So we've got some really strong runners that we just like slam together. It's gonna be great. Quite looking forward to seeing this work. So using these pack clips, um, these are great for uh, giving yourself um, nice posi positioning for your gas pipe. So fix it all in together. It's really secure now. And this will come out into the cooker. So right now we're just doing the um, electronics, um, putting it all on this board. Uh, as you can see, we have the solar charge controller. This is a fuse box. It's got nice LEDs in it, which kind of tell you which fuse is gone. Um, and I'm just wiring it up. This will go to my switches, the USB and the voltmeter. This is going to all our lighting, the kind of chocolate boxes. Um, this is going to the battery. We're gonna have a split charge in here that hasn't arrived yet. Um, and this is going to the heater. So as soon as the other components arrive, we'll be able to put this together and it should look pretty good. So up on the roof with Ollie. Say hello. Hi. We're gonna just try and get the solar cables down the conduit we left in. They're quite thick but we've got some string in it, so hopefully that'll work. Do you think it's gonna work? Uh, yeah. Oof, I don't know, I'm not sure it will. So the conduit was not actually thick enough and it was a bit rotten, so we just couldn't get these fat solar cables through it. Um, so basically what we're doing now is we've poked it through. Luckily there was a light hole we could get it in. Um, and now I'm just nailing it around and we bring it in now through the front. And Harriet right now is just doing some more cladding to complete the sauna. <laughs> so working on this cupboard, um, because of the shape, a complex shape, it's quite difficult to um, make it all work. So 
the caps at the end, I'm using quite thin ply because essentially I can kind of bend it a little bit to fit the, the weird shape, but that should go on there. And it just flex a little bit just to the top, just to come in and then we'll screw it all in together. And it's quite nice when you put the sides on because suddenly it has form. Are we just gonna put these old edges in? They're pretty dirty, but with a quick sand down, they look a lot better already. Um, the weather's good on the weekend, so we wanna finish it today or maybe latest tomorrow and go climbing. Um, so just putting in the circuit board I made last night. Um, the heater's all wired in, we've got the exhaust coming out uh, underneath uh, and we've got the heat coming out the side. Um, this board we've just connected in the solar, the solar goes into the charge, solar charge controller and everything goes through this now. So the battery will go into the solar charge controller and then the load comes out into our fuse box. That goes off to some switches and other appliances uh, and then comes out and then these are the looms that go all the way into the top for our lights. So yeah, just wiring up. Uh, if you check the link below, there's an ebook which has all the instructions for setting out the electronics and everything in your van. So if you're looking at it and you're intimidated, um, especially if you've not done this sort of thing before, but if you check the ebook, then it's got it all in there um, and it just save you a lot of time. These are the little spotlight LEDs um, wired into a chocolate box. Just gonna shove that up inside and then Push it in, these are great, they're really, really narrow so they can fit within the width of whatever you put on the roof. Bam! And now, now it's the moment of truth. Does anything work? Whoa! Everything works! Do the switches work? And this one's got a switch because it's by the cooker, so we use it as a cooking light as well. And then. So. These lights switch on the side lights, you can see just here, and then here, these ones switch on like the main lights for the van. Now I'll show you them both on. There we go. This is the heater here. So you need to wait a second for it to turn on. So here it is. And it's going to come out here. Then here there's also a USB point that you can see. And yeah, that Cut. <laughs> Cut! You can't see it right now, but we've just hot boxed the van just to test the heater. <laughs> Pretty it bloody works. good. Oh my god. What are you thinking, Harriet? I'm gonna be warm. Yeah. Are you excited about the prospect of van life in your in my ridiculously warm, pimp yeah, it's tiny nice. van? <laughs> the tiniest, pimpest van conversion. Look at it. We've got the cooking over there at the back. We'll, we'll do a van tour. We'll do like a whole van tour later. But yeah, we're. This is, I think it's like midday five. Midday five, yeah. Um, and we probably only have a day. We haven't finished it yet. I know, we've got a day. A day, one day we'll finish this. And you promised them at the beginning that you were doing five days. No, I said take a week. <laughs> but I think probably five days. I mean, we've done two half days as well. Look at this guy. <laughs> so cheeky. This is a cheeky guy. To try and find this gas leak, we basically put 50 50. Um, washing up liquid and um, water uh, and then we basically just dab it on the joints where because there's not very many joints in this it's a really simple system so we're just dabbing it around and then when the bubbles start coming out you can kind of see it so we've already found it it's this joint on the propex um, and as you can see it's bubbling away the cool thing is is all we've got to do is basically get that out um, it's annoying that one um, but it's cool. We can find the leak. We can get rid of the leak. Harriet's got to do the paneling on the inside of the door, but we only exactly have enough wood to do it. What's the chances of getting it right? Well, you That's just the question. told me you thought I had twenty-five percent chance of getting That's it right. That's being first generous. Time. That was being generous. And I'm giving myself forty-five percent chance of getting it right first time. It means I can't mess up once. She can't mess up once. How many times have you not messed up on door panels? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned to find out more. I think we've got the worst week in Spanish history in weather. So bad. Um, at the moment we're just doing some finishing touches. I'm going to make like a little triangle base handle to go in here. It should look pretty cool. Um, and then probably after that get onto the uh, auto carpet. How's it going Harriet? Have we fucked Another up one? yet? No. No. Ooh. Good.
just uh, doing the last piece. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. It's what I'd like. It's good, right? No mistakes. No mistakes. Looks pretty good. I can't believe it. I feel quite tough. <laughs> Finally. Finally, the sun's come out. Um, just applying the oat water carpet, so you spray the adhesive on each side of it, and then you just ideally take a straight edge, you line the straight edge up, and then you just with a scalpel, and if you can kind of just cut it down. Helps if your scalpel is super sharp. And it's just amazing because your van goes from looking really rough and ready to basically you looking really finished. Just some trays being made, they're being glued up. It's a little bit of a bodge job, but they're kind of mostly covered and you know, I want to finish it today. Uh, I've got some little dividers in them. Just standard, the way I've cut them, um, just a couple cross cuts. At the moment, they're just gluing. Typically, I always think that no glue dries faster than a screw. Um, so I always use screws for everything, but for these, I just glue them and I'll actually screw them later to make them stronger. Um, and Harriet right now is just doing the auto carpet. You're enjoying that? Yeah, I love it. It's really nice stuff to work with. Super good. Line with the same design of the other fabrics. Harriet's added a nice little place to store your kitchen stuff at the back. Just now sanding down. Can I get a nice finish? Um, then we'll do a coat of Danish oil or three. Um, but as you can see, this is coming together really nicely. Oh, look at that join. Just applying Danish oil, this stuff's amazing. It will just seal it in, especially on the chopping board. It's gonna be like super liberal because this is what's gonna kind of basically keep it, keep it all good. And Danish oil is also food safe, which is great. Um, and yeah, we just put this on any surface that we're likely to touch or how it's likely to touch. Um, or get dirty and it would just protect the wood. We typically have to do three layers of it, let it dry, it takes about six hours to dry. So yeah, pretty psyched. And it comes up the grain, comes out really nice as soon as you put this stuff on. It's pretty cool. Um, but it's starting to really look like a sort of cool van now. It's really exciting to kind of finally get there after, after six days of graft. So this um, foam mattress is ridiculously pimp. It's from Memory Foam Warehouse and it's, well, a memory foam mattress, but custom, they cut it to size, make the covers to size, really, really nice. Um, and actually super comfortable. I'm not actually a massive fan of memory foam personally, but um, this is actually really nice. You're gonna be, you're gonna be really comfortable with this. <laughs> I love my mattress. I love my mattress. The finishing touches, this is a, uh, these edges, we can just also carpet over that. So just make the shape the same shape, put it on, same on this door, it's just gluing right now. Um, and there's just a couple other bits like that we can do just to make it tidier. Um, Harriet's putting a curtain rail. This is just attached using these um, pipe fittings. Super easy because you can pop it on and off. It's about to start painting and just do some of this like blue fade technique she has um, just to kind of give it some colour in here and, and match all the other decor. She's got the sheets she printed as well. So. Um, I am colouring the wood with a dye, so it's staining staining the walls and I'm making a ombre so it's going to be glued to white. Putting some white paint back over the top to try and make the fade a bit smoother. Finally the split trash paint has arrived, so just need to install that really. It's a bit stingy in the old cables though, but luckily I've got some in my van. Um, I just need to connect it up. I left space on the board here to, to fit it in. Harriet is underneath the car doing the dirty work. How's it going, Harriet? Oh, yeah, great. Great, thanks. It's actually um, a real pain to get the the wire through the front of the cab, so we just went underneath, um, and Harriet is zip-tying that on. She's having a lot of fun, you can see. Ah. What's going on here? Look, how many cable ties can you get under a van? Yeah. So now we've basically added the split charge. The van is complete, like properly complete. Um, all Harriet needs to do is just um, fill it with stuff. Hit the road.
building the van with Nate was an experience. There were some really amazing moments and there were some really difficult moments, mainly because I like messed up quite a lot and didn't bring the things that he asked me to bring. Um, so yeah, so, uh, but I think generally we worked quite well together. Basically by the end of the process, what like we've made slash he's made is like really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I love it.